God, save this video from a strike. Don't let the big Japanese companies sue me. Amen. Okay, now we can start the tutorial. First of all we need to make a town map. If you don't know how to do this you can find a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Also I created a second layer for roofs. After that we should create a player's character with animation frames and 8 directions behavior. If we need to make animation work we should use this script. Now when we go to a house we can't see anything under the roof. To fix it I also wrote this script. Okay, but if we want to call it a Pokemon type game we need Pokemons, yep. Firstly I've created a little cutscene with Squirtle by this script. Now we are making an enemy and a layout for battle. For the battle layout I've got a background based user interface and sprites of Pokemons. I also created long sprites with image points on the left side. These will be health bars, but they won't work before we create HP variables and scripts for attacks. When we push one of the buttons we make the HP decrease by 20. Nextly we set the width of the enemy health bar to this formula. The width is divided by 100 and multiplied by a HP variable. Also we need to make an animation for pushing the buttons and adding them to the script. Now it works well. We will solve this problem later. Now I need to explain how the combat system works in JRPG before making it. Usually the combat cycle consists of four stages, the choice of the player's action, the effect of this action, the enemy's action, and the effect of his action. In my game I have reduced this list to two stages because I do not consider it necessary to show again what the player did. To do this we create the battle stage variable and the condition if the battle stage is zero to the button press. If all the conditions are met the attack is triggered and the variable is changed to one. In the event when the battle stage is equal to one we immediately change the variable to two because otherwise the actions of this script will be repeated infinite times while the variable is one. Then we make the game wait half a second during the enemy attacks and another half a second so that the battle does not seem too fast. In the first pause we damage the player change the animation frame of the buttons to translucent and change the animation speed to zero. In the second pause we return the animation of the buttons and change the variable to zero. Also I've added the script for loss and win. The last one can be done without controlling the mouse buttons but then the PC will have to constantly check this variable which will add loads. Now we have a Pokemon battle ready. But it won't be a Pokemon game if we can't catch them. Therefore we create a variable responsible for defeating this Pokemon, add Pokemon sprites to the window on the left and make the second Pokemon invisible. When we win the variable changes. Along with it the visibility of the sprite also changes. I also added a script to click on the sprite of the captured Pokemon. After clicking the sprite of our Pokemon changes. I just forgot about the issue with the health bars. We fixed it here. This is where I finished creating the basis for the Pokemon game. I also left the game file in the video description, so you can add or change something in the game yourself. Good luck with that. In the next video I'll show you how to add an NPC the racing game I created earlier. See you next week? Month? Year? So, bye.